For My Mother, May I Inherit Half Her Strength is a poem by Lorna Goodison. This is a poem based on the real-life experiences of the poet as she saw her mother through her life going through the different challenges. And one of the things that stood out in this poem is the love of a mother. The love of a mother to overcome challenges, financial challenges, emotional challenges, and to still have the strength of character to raise children in a way that will be to their benefit. The most important thing you can do for a mother all year round is to appreciate the sacrifices and the challenges that she overcomes through her love. My mother loved my father. I write this as an absolute. In this my 30th year, the year to discard absolutes. He appeared, her fate disguised, as a Sunday player in a cricket match. He had ridden from a country 100 miles south of hers. <laughs> she tells me he dressed the part, visiting dandy, maroon blazer, cream serge pants, seam like razor, and the beret and the two-tone shoes. My father stopped to speak to her sister till he looked and saw her by the oleander. Sure in the kingdom of my blue-eyed grandmother, he never played the cricket match that day. He wooed her with words and he won her. He had nothing but words to woo her. On a visit to distant Kingston, he wrote, I stood on the corner of King Street and looked, and there was not one woman in this town as lovely as you. My mother was a child of the petite bourgeoisie, studying to be a teacher. She oiled her hands to hold pens. My father <laughs> barely knew his father. His mother died young. He was a boy who grew with his granny. My mother's trousseau came by steamer through the snows of Montreal, where her sisters, Alberta of the Cheekbones and the Perennial Rose, combed Julit back streets with French turned names for Doris's wedding things. Such a wedding Harvey River had never seen. Who anywhere had seen a veil 15 chantilly yards long? and a crepe de chine dress with inlets of silk goddets and a neckline clasped with jeweled pins. And on her wedding day, she wept, for it was a brazen bride in those days who smiled. And her bouquet looked for the world like a sheaf of wheat against the unknown of her belly, a sheaf of wheat backed by maidenhair fern. Her face was washed by something other than river water. My father made one assertive move. He took the imported cherub down from the heights of the cake and dropped it in the soft territory of her bosom. And she cried. When I came to know my mother many years later, I knew her as the figure who sat at the first thing I learned to read. S-I-N-G-E-R, singer. And she breastfed my brother while she sewed. And she taught us to read while she sewed. And she sat in judgment over all our disputes as she sewed. She could work miracles. She would make a garment from a square of cloth in a span that defied time. Or feed 20 people on a stew made from fallen from the head cabbage leaves and a carrot and a chocho and a palm full of meat. And she rose early and sent us into the world clean and she went to bed in the dark. For my father came in always last.
There is a place somewhere where my mother never took the younger ones. A country where my father, with the always smile, my father, who all women loved, who had the perpetual quality of wonder given only to a child, hurt his pride. Even at his death, there was this friend who stood at her side, but my mother is adamant that that has no place in the memory of my father. When he died, she sewed dark dresses for the women among us and she summoned that walk straight back that she gave to us and buried him dry-eyed. Just that morning, weeks after, she stood delivering bananas from their skin, singing in that flat hill country voice. She fell down a note to the realization that she did not have to be brave just this once and she cried for her hands had grown coarse with raising nine children for her body for 20 years permanently fat for the time she pawned her machine for my sister's senior Cambridge fees and for the pain she bore with the eyes of a queen. And she cried also because she loved him.